Lord God bless every person that's hearing this program today. In Jesus' name, you're hearing the program, Gain to Know Jesus. And my name is Harris Kakalidis. And today's program of Gain to Know Jesus, we will continue studying the Gospel of Mark. We have been gaining some background information on Mark chapter 2, verses 23 to 28. Now we are ready to tackle, as it were, this passage. Let's read Mark chapter 2, verse 23 to 28 again. Now it happened that he went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. And as they went, his disciples began to pluck the heads of grain. And the Pharisees said to him, Look, why do you... Do they do what is not lawful on the Sabbath? But he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he was in need and hungry? He and those with him. How he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar, the high priest, and ate the showbread which is not lawful to eat except for the priests, and also gave some to those who were with him. And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. This event could be also found in Matthew 12, verse 1 through 8. Let's read this as well. At that time Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath, and his disciples were hungry, and began to pluck hairs of grain, and to eat. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. But he said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry? He and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God, and ate the showbread which was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only for the priests. Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? Yet I say to you that in this place there is one greater than the temple. But if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the guiltless, for the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. And in Luke 6 verse 1 to 5 says, Now it happened on the second Sabbath, after the first, that he went through the grain fields, and his disciples plucked the heads of grain and ate them, rubbing them in their hands. And some of the Pharisees said to them, why are, you, why are you doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath? But Jesus answering them said, Have you not even read this, what David did when he was hungry? He and those who were with him, how he went into the house of God, took and ate the showbread, and also gave some to those with him which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat. And he said to them, The Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. The time of this event is given by Luke on the second Sabbath after the first, or literally, the second first Sabbath. This verse is a very difficult one to explain. John Calvin, the reformer, believed it to be a reference to the Feast of First Fruits, which was right after the first Sabbath, which was the Passover. So this is a phrase that has been left many scholars clueless. So scholars state it should not be in our Bible. Some of them do. Others set a date for it. I, on the hand, would say it might be a reference to the second Sabbath of the year or the second Sabbath of the month, the second Sabbath of one of Israel's holy days, um, holy feast days. Um, sometimes they had feasts that were more than one day. Okay, he went through the grain fields on the Sabbath, 
And as they went, his disciples began to pluck the heads of grain. What the disciples were doing was not illegal according to the law of Moses. Deuteronomy 23, verse 24, 25 says, When you come into your neighbor's vineyard, you may eat your fill of grapes at your pleasure, but you shall not put any in your container. When you come into your neighbor's standing grain, you may pluck the heads with your hand, but you shall not use a sickle on your neighbor's standing grain. It was permitted for them if they go to their neighbor's field to eat from it if they were hungry. It wasn't a sin. But it was a Sabbath day. It shouldn't have been a sin either. Matthew tells us, and his disciples were hungry. There is no sin in eating when you're hungry. There is no law against walking as well. This was not against even their own law as long as one does not exceed 2,000 cubits. A cubit is 18 inches. This is less than half a mile. What the New Testament calls a Sabbath day journey. They were able to walk certain places as long as they did not exceed that limit. So then being hungry, they began to pluck the heads of grain and to eat. Look as rubbing them in their hands. Matthew and Mark states, And the Pharisees said to him, Look, why do, you, why do they do what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And Luke states, And some of the Pharisees said to them, Why are you doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath? This means that Jesus most likely among his disciples was the first to do it. And his disciples followed their master's footsteps. Why not? This of what they have done was not against the law of Moses. But was going against their oral laws, which we discussed before. The oral law be, being laws that would so-called put a fence around the law itself, which in reality was not a help to the law, but a hindrance in following the law. The Pharisees took no time in being offended at what Jesus and his disciples did. Instead of focusing on the Lord and keeping the day holy, they focus on others. And the Pharisee said to Jesus, Look, why do you do, and they do, what is not lawful on the Sabbath? In other words, why are you not doing what we do? Jesus answered them, Have you never read what David did when he was in need and hungry? He and those with him, how he went into the house of God in the days of Ab Abiatar the high priest, and ate the showbread, which is not lawful to eat except the priest and also gave to those who were with him. In the days of Abiathar the high priest is not mentioned by Luke or Matthew, but it is mentioned by Mark. If, if Jesus was saying, If you consider me breaking the law, look at what David did, who according to scripture is a man according to God's own heart. He was hungry, and the priest did not consider it a sin to feed him and those with him with the bread which was only given to priests according to the law. The priests felt that feeding the hungry was more important than keeping the ritual law. Man's physical need is more important than keeping a so-called holy day. Matthew adds, Or oh, have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless. Yet I say to you that in this place there is one greater than the temple. But if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. How, how do the priests profane the Sabbath in many ways? One, they were obliged to work on the Sabbath when others were not. Number two, if a baby's time of circumcision falls on the Sabbath, or a Gentile wants to become a Jew with all rights, they will consider circumcising the baby or Gentile of more importance 
than keeping the Sabbath itself. In the Gospel of John, Jesus states this in John 7, verse 22 to 23. Moses therefore gave you circumcision, not that it is of, from Moses, but from the fathers. And you circumcise a man on the Sabbath. If a man receives circumcision on the Sabbath so that the law of Moses should not be broken, are you angry with me because I made a man completely well on the Sabbath? Notice, well, notice what Jesus said in John 7, 22-23. The priests circumcised men on Sabbaths. They considered circumcision of more importance than the Sabbath day. Yet, I say to you that in this place there is one greater than the temple. The one the temple was made to worship is greater than the temple itself. Jesus was him who the temple was made to worship. Malachi 3 verse 1. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. Jesus and his disciples were guiltless. Before Romans took the authority of the Jews to kill, many were murdered for not keeping the Sabbath according to the oral law, and not to mention even them without the authority. They were able to send the guilty man to the Romans and have them carry out their execution, or even try to kill them themselves. They, they almost threw Jesus off a cliff. They stoned Paul. They didn't have no right to do that, but still they, they, they broke their own Romans laws to kill a person. All three Gospels, one can find the last part a little different from the others. In Mark, Jesus states, And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. In Luke it states, The Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. In Matthew it states, For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Jesus calls himself the Son of Man again. In the Gospel of Mark chapter 2. A reference to Daniel 7, verse 13 and 14. It says, I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages to serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. And his kingdom, the one which shall not be destroyed. Jesus was calling himself the coming eternal king of the universe. He was calling himself God. Amazing. I'll see you next program of Getting to Know Jesus where we'll start. Mark chapter 3. If you enjoy this program, feel free to make a copy and give it to a friend. And that way they will get to know Jesus as well.